Bhagavate Vasudevaya Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 6, Text number 19. Didrikshus Tat Aham Ruha Panidhaiha Mano Ridhi Vikshamano Api Napasyam Avitripta Ivatura The direction start Aham Buya Panidaya Mano Ridhi Vikshamano Pinapasyam Avitritya Ivatura the Dikshu, the Dikshu desiring to see, see. Tat, Tat that, that. Aham, Aham I, I. Buya again, again. Pranidaya having concentrated the mind, concentrated the mind. Mana, Mana mind Vridi upon the heart, heart. Vikshamana waiting to see, see. Api, Api in spite of, in spite of. Na, Na never, never. Apasyam, Apasyam saw him Avritipta without being satisfied Eva like Aturaha aggrieved Translation and purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. I desire to see again the transcendental form of the Lord, but despite my attempts to concentrate upon the heart with eagerness to view the form again, I could not see him anymore, and thus dissatisfied, I was very much aggrieved. Purport. There's no mechanical process to see the form of the Lord. It completely depends on the causeless mercy of the Lord. We cannot demand the Lord to be present before our vision, just as we cannot demand the sun to rise where, whenever we like. The sun rises out of his own accord, so also the Lord is pleased to be present out of his causeless mercy. One should simply await the opportune moment and go on discharging his prescribed duty in devotional service of the Lord. Narada Muni thought that the Lord could be seen again by the same mechanical process which was successful in his first attempt. But in spite of his utmost endeavor, he could not make the second attempt successful. The Lord is completely independent of all obligations. He can simply be bound up by the tie of unalloyed devotion nor is he visible or perceivable by our material senses. <coughs> when he pleases, being satisfied with the sincere attempt of devotional service, depending completely on the mercy of the Lord, then he may be seen out of his own accord. This is a summary of the basis of bhakti that the Lord reciprocates as they surrender unto me I reward them accordingly the Lord reciprocates but that reciprocation is not under any law because ultimately Krishna is a supreme person and a person means that he naturally is affected by the feelings of others. But because he is the supreme law maker, he is beyond any so-called laws. Therefore he responds according not to law, but according to the feelings of his devotees. The whole process of bhakti is therefore to invoke feelings. Uh, this is the meaning of sadhana bhakti. Sadhana bhakti is that process which when followed 
which will lead to bhava bhakti. And bhava bhakti means loving devotion to the Supreme Lord. So sadhana or the regulated practices which we are following are meant to develop our loving feelings for Krishna. In that sense, there is a process, a science for doing this. Uh, Sri Sanatana Goswami has listed in Hari Bhakti Vilas and Srila Rupa Goswami has explained in Prabhupada's translated version, Nectar of Devotion, that there are 64 items of sadhana bhakti. And we should familiarize ourselves with all of these 64. Of course, they begin with finding out a bona fide spiritual master and surrendering unto him and receiving instructions from him and following in the footsteps of the previous acharyas. There are ten very important principles and of them these are the first four. And the last five are considered to be the most potent of the processes for invoking devotion, namely to chant the holy name of the Lord, to associate with pure devotees of the Lord, to read and study Srimad Bhagavatam, to worship the deity of the Lord, and to reside in a holy place of the Lord's transcendental pastimes. These are considered the most potent means for invoking bhava or loving devotion. So we see that the process which Srila Prabhupada has very nicely uh, given us in the morning program, it provides us with these five potent factors. Uh, we get to chant the holy names of the Lord. We get to associate with the pure devotees. That means all the Vaishnavas who are on the path of pure bhakti. We get to hear Srimad Bhagavatam and study it. We get to uh, worship the deity form of the Lord. And we um, are in a place of Krishna's transcendental pastimes, as you can see. All of the pastimes are so nicely depicted here. So, this is the morning program, which Prabhupada has uh, made into a capsule form. Just like people like to take medicine in a capsule. So Srila Prabhupada has made this medicine in a capsule. And as far as possible he has sugar-coated it. Because as Prabhupada said, if I wanted to be very strict, nobody could follow. It would be so difficult. He tried to at first establish that people should chant 64 rounds. How much Many devotees struggle just to chant 16 rounds. They have to spend half the day chanting their rounds. What to speak if you had to chant 64 rounds? The temple would never get cleaned. Nobody would have anything to eat. And who knows all the other problems we would have. So Prabhupada has uh, put it in a capsule. You know, and if we, in case it gets caught in our throat, He's given us a slap on the back, <laughs> just so that we can swallow. Sometimes devotees have to get a slap on the back, because the capsule gets stuck in their throat. They have to slap on the back. But the fact is that the process does work. It is effective. The Krishna, uh, this is a very important theme of how First of all, we have to accept God as the Supreme Personality, the Supreme Being, Ajita, unconquerable. There are so many wonderful fights that Krishna had in which he defeated all kinds of competitors. And uh, we therefore know that no one can defeat Krishna. Uh, everyone bows down before Krishna. Even the big powerful demigods like Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva have to bow down before Krishna. What to speak of ordinary mortals? Even the Supreme Personality of Godhead in his different forms also are attracted to Krishna. Like Lord Narayan, for example, when he sees 
uh, a drama uh, and in which Krishna, Vasudeva and Krishna is like Narayan, sees a drama in which Vrindavan and Krishna's pastimes are enacted. Then the Krishna of Dwarka thinks, this is most wonderful and becomes attracted to the Vrindavan pastimes of the original personality of Godhead. Uh, on and on, Lord Vishnu, Mahavishnu, Garbhadakshay Vishnu called for Krishna and Arjuna. There's a whole pastime mentioned in Krishna book in which Krishna and Arjuna go to Vishnu, visit Vishnu. And the purpose is that Vishnu wants to see, have darshan of Krishna. So, even expanded forms of the Lord, like Vishnu and Narayan, are attracted to Krishna. Now, what to speak of the love which Krishna's immediate expansion, Lord Balaram feels for him. Lord Balaram uh, wants so much to serve Krishna that he becomes Krishna's shoes, he becomes Krishna's cane, he becomes Krishna's bed, he transforms himself into Krishna's couch, his seat, his umbrella. And then he does other personal services for Krishna in so many ways. So, you know, Ekale Ishvara Krishna as Saprata. Krishna alone is the Supreme Lord and everyone else is his servant. This is the first significant point. Krishna is still Bhagavan Swayam. Krishna is Swayam Bhagavan. Janma Dasyajataha. From the very beginning of the Bhagavatam, there is only one subject that Krishna is all and all. So that point is mentioned here and because he's all in all, there's no question of him being ordered. You cannot order Krishna. You cannot order Krishna. Even in the ordinary material affairs of the world, if an ordinary big diplomat, for example, breaks the law, they cannot try him by normal means. Diplo diplomatic immunity it is called for an ordinary diplomat. What to speak of you know, big, big persons. They cannot deal with, be dealt with. And it's mentioned in one place that uh, you cannot uh, estimate or you cannot judge great personalities in the same way. Just like there's sometimes uh, uh, criticism. Krishna's Ras Leela, Krishna's dancing with so many gopis. But Sukadev Goswami makes a point quoting from a famous verse from the Vedas that, or Puranas, that even great powerful controllers are not affected by ordinary karma. So what to speak of the Supreme Original Personality of Godhead? He uses that just as one defense to, ex to satisfy the inquiries of Maharaj Pariksit about the purity of Krishna's dealings with the gopis. So, there should be no doubt. And now, uh, you know, people say, if God exists, show me. And Prabhupada says in response, what is your power to see? You cannot even see beyond your own eyelids. You cannot see in the dark, which means you cannot see without the help of the sun, the moon, or at least electricity. You have no power to see. So when you demand, if God exists, I want to see him, then the immediate response is, what is your power to see? What is your qualification to see? One disqualification is impatience. And that's one of the important points in this verse. Sri Narad Muni actually got to see God directly with his eyes. And then the Lord disappeared. Why? for a number of reasons. One, to increase his eagerness. And it says here, he attempted many attempts to concentrate upon the heart to see the Lord with eagerness to view the form again. Yeah. This is very important, eagerness, enthusiasm, eagerness, hokantika, greed, enthusiasm, eagerness. It's a necessary ingredient in spiritual life to be very eager for serving Krishna. So one thing is that Narad Muni wanted 
and, uh, the Lord wanted to increase Narada's eagerness. And very often that is why separation takes place. We always feel that we don't want to be separated from that person that we love. But by separation, actually our love increases. All scriptures state this. It increases, it goes higher. So, again and again, Krishna will deal with us in such a way to make our love increase. Love for Guru, love for Vaishnavas, love for Krishna. Because Guru and Vaishnavas are the representatives of Krishna. So our feelings for them are immediately transferred to Krishna. Therefore, there is no difference. So, whether it is separation from Krishna, whether it is separation from Guru, whether it is separation from the Vaishnavas, in any case, if we understand things properly, then our love and devotion will increase. And therefore, it is said here, uh, one should simply await the opportune moment and go on discharging his prescribed duty in devotional service of the Lord. But this is how we pass our time in between darshans. Go on performing our regulated service, devotional service to the Lord. If we don't do that, then we will not be able to gain the value of separation. Because it is through service and separation that we are connected with the person that we're separated from. If we don't do devotional service, then that separation will actually literally separate us. But if we stay firmly engaged, always in devotional service, then we will get the experience that all of the devotees of the Lord feel when they are serving in separation from the Lord. They feel as if the Lord is present with them at every moment. Therefore, Kunti said, let there be difficulties, because in those difficulties then I can always remember you. And the gopis and other residents of Vrindavan, when they were separated from Krishna, they could not make out whether Krishna was actually present with them or separated from them. And in fact, Krishna came to them. In fact, Krishna came to them. But Krishna will come, Guru will come, Vaishnavas will come. If we remember them in separation, they will come and be present. Prabhupada said, I never remember a moment when I ever felt myself without my spiritual master. I don't remember a single moment when I was ever feeling as if he was not there for me. So this is the intensity a disciple should have in his meditation on Guru. To always know Guru is accompanying me wherever I go at every moment. Is my best friend, is always by my side and is looking after me in all respects. To understand how the Guru is present, this takes transcendental understanding. It is not a sentiment. And it is not simply physical, because a bug, Prabhupada said, can be on the throne, but not actually deserving to sit on the throne. Physical proximity with someone is not the real best, highest form of association. There is Vapu and there is Vani. Vapu means physical association. That may sometimes be there and it may not. But more important is Vani. Vani is transcendental sound in the form of good instructions. So one who always lives, guided by the instructions of the Guru, always associates with the spiritual master and can never be separated. Therefore, it is mentioned here, one should simply await the opportune moment and go on discharging his prescribed duty in devotional service of the Lord. If we do that, we always feel ourselves connected. So another reason for the separation was for Narada to experience how he could gain the Lord's association in separation. Because sometimes it is said, familiarity breeds contempt. Or if not contempt, it may make one lax. It's too easy. So we better appreciate what we have sometimes when we don't have it for some time. Then we think 
again when we gain it, oh, it was so valuable. So valuable. And ultimately, Narada acted, and the Lord acted with Narada for our sake. Because really, Narada Muni uh, is serving all of us as an example. Krishna, Narayan, Lord Narayan, is using Narada Muni. Through Narada Muni, he is instructing the whole universe about the principles of devotional service. This is ultimately another reason why the Lord separated himself from Narada Muni. Because by Narada Muni's own behavior, we can better understand how we should behave. And what was his special quality? He always chanted the glories of the Lord. This is most important, to always be chanting, hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. This is the method for God realization in this age. So we have to do this, constantly hear and chant. The quality of our hearing and chanting should gradually improve. When you go out on Sankirtan, try as far as you can to hear and chant Krishna Katha. I have seen advanced book distributors and they can introduce more and more about Krishna. In fact, if they don't, they don't feel satisfied. They give something, some touch is there, direct or indirect because they themselves become enlivened by this. So whatever your activities, you can do it in different ways. As I have said, I once saw a devotee, he was offering an arti, and I had to remind him, Babu, the curtain is closed and you're on the outside of the curtain. <laughs> he was, the curtain was closed and he was offering the arti. And he was on the outside of the curtain. In other words, it wasn't exactly that he was meditating on Krishna. He was heavily affected by impersonalism. He, didn't, he was so much impersonalist in his conception that he was standing there and didn't even see that the curtain was closed. And he went, oh, and he opened the curtain. So we may go on doing our service in a mechanical way without getting to the point. And the actual point is to understand Krishna is a person, we are persons, and we have to develop our personal relationship with the Lord. We begin by developing personal relationships with Krishna's devotees. This is a great opportunity. This is why Prabhupada formed International Society for Krishna Consciousness, to give association to each other of the devotees. Because at the present moment, we are far away separated from Krishna by all of the contamination. So much lust, so much anger, so much greed, so much desire for profit, adoration, distinction. These things are keeping us from seeing Krishna. So we need some very great mercy. And that very great mercy is a merciful association of devotees who are willing to accept us even despite our contaminated condition. Krishna, you know, will accompany us, but he is aloof. He's aloof because he's uh, pavitram. He's pure, supremely pure. Until you're pure, how can you expect to associate with he who is completely pure? In that sense, the devotee of the Lord is said to be the merciful incarnation of the Lord. When the Lord wants to give his personal association, to a conditioned soul, he presents himself in the form of the devotee. So we should try to understand that when we're in each other's association, it is Krishna's mercy, Prabhu. <laughs> it is Krishna's mercy that he has come as devotees. And now not, we're not only speaking about guru, Vaishnavas, all Vaishnavas, because Vaishnavas who are under the guidance of Guru are also extremely uh, beneficial association. Extremely beneficial association. It is not only that Guru is good association or uh, the deity is good association. Anyone who is, under, who is under disciplinary vow is extremely good association. 
So we, we should think, be thankful for this. Uh, otherwise, what is the hope? If we only hold out and we only think only Krishna is worth associating with, when or when will ever that day come? It will never come. Not in our condition, it won't come. And the only hope we have of that day coming is to take that association which Krishna is now giving us. The Vaishnava's association. Devotional service. It's another form of Krishna. Bhakti Devi. Srimati Radharani has extended herself by offering the opportunity to all conditioned souls to do service to Krishna. This is her hand coming out like this, giving this blessing to us all. Yes, serve Krishna. I give you that right. Everyone serve Krishna. Because she is the ultimate personality who serves Krishna. She is the one who ultimately controls the whole process of bhakti. Because she ultimately offers everything to Krishna. And she's telling everyone, yes, come forward and offer service. So therefore Prabhupada says that in Vrindavan, everyone chants, Jai Radhe, Jai Radhe, Jai Radhe. Praying to her, O oh, Supreme uh, form of the Lord's loving devotion, Srimati Radharani. Please bestow your mercy upon us so that we can uh, please you and thereby please Krishna. Now, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Krishna himself, with the mood of Radharani, distributing the opportunity to serve and love Krishna, and Lord Balaram, beside him, coming as Lord Nityananda. Now, Krishna himself has taken up Srimati Radharani's work. Seeing that Radharani's position is the best of all positions, he has taken over her mood and come in the form of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And it is this Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who has come to deliver the people of this age through the process of Sankirtan Yagna. He and Nityananda Prabhu, with their arms upraised, going village to village, town to town, city to city, country to country, declaring to everyone to take part in chanting Hare Krishna. Because our books, which are the fulfillment of Mahaprabhu's St. Kirtan mission, what do the books speak about to chant Hare Krishna, to do devotional service? The books are St. Kirtan. The books preach. They are Mahaprabhu's Vani, Gauravani Pracharane, Nirvishesha Shunnavadi, Paschatate Shatarane. This is the mission of Srila Prabhupada, the foremost servitor of Sri Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, to distribute the message of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu all over the world in order to annihilate impersonalism and voidism. And we are somehow or other getting, getting the opportunity to assist in that wonderful mission. So let us never forget that for a moment. Let us understand God has come. God is Krishna and Krishna has come as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the Yuga Dharma is this Sankirtan Yagna. Don't forget this. Don't forget this. Don't forget this while you're doing your daily chores. Don't let your daily chores occupy your entire time in such a way that you forget, hey, this is the Sankirtan movement. I have an opportunity. If Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda Prabhu came dancing down the street, I bet you would put aside your cooking. I bet you would put aside your broom. I bet you'd even, well, you might take your baby with you, but you might even put aside your baby. You might put aside everything and just go out and offer obeisances. And if Mahaprabhu went, chant, chant, and lifted his arms, everyone would just start singing and dancing. So somehow we have to think that this is happening. So that we do from time to time, every day, put aside all of those things and just give ourselves 
well, one day we may be so fortunate that our entire energy is only for that purpose. But until that time, we must make the time. So purification is required. The Sankirtan process is the method. As Prabhupada says, the Lord cannot be perceived by our blunt material senses. We're going to have to purify them of what? Lust. But what is lust? Only Arjuna. Krishna says it is lust only Arjuna that is covering our eternal vision. So that has to be purified out. And the process is bhakti. And the Lord is completely, now this is the final point, the Lord is completely overwhelmed. Although he cannot be overwhelmed by anyone, he is completely overwhelmed by pure love. Although he can't be conquered, he can be conquered by love. As Prabhupada often gives the example, a big, big governor who was very difficult to see and someone came to see him and they were standing out there for one hour, two hours. Actually, he quoted this as an example, having heard it. A big British governor, viceroy or something, who had been sent by the British and who was in his room and the uh, someone came to see him and was waiting for hours and being told that the governor was quite busy. And finally, he decided to let me see what he's doing. And he peeked through the door and he saw the governor, you know, on his hands and knees. And the governor's grandson was on top, astride the governor, hitting him in the backside, saying, get up, get up, go. <laughs> Treating the governor as if he was a horse. <laughs> The Prabhupada uses this example to say that such a big person who could not be seen by anyone and who everyone bowed down to, he is bowing down and his grandson is riding him around as if he's a horse. Because of love. Because the grandson loves him and he loves his grandson. So Krishna is like this. Krishna melts. His heart melts. And the melting of his heart becomes more and more intensified according to the nature of the love. And so the residents of Vrindavan are considered to be the best of all the lovers of Krishna because their love is completely devoid of any sense of awe or veneration. And amongst all of them, the gopis are considered the best because unconditionally they surrender everything more than anyone else for Krishna. And amongst the gopis, Srimati Radharani is considered the best. And Srimati Radharani and Krishna's love is said to be just like shellac and heat, which one melts the other. And so they become indistinguishable. The heart of Srimati Radharani and the heart of Krishna have melted together. And they have, uh, they, they, by that melting process, they have become Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So this is our purpose in life, to worship Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and thereby to understand uh, that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu will one day reveal to us uh, his forms as Sri Sri Radha and Krishna. So we should go on with our process of Krishna consciousness. It is the way to gradually purify our senses, our heart, and by the purified senses and heart, uh, more and more Krishna will reveal himself to us in so many wonderful ways. In so many ways, he will enliven us. So, as Narad Muni will feel uh, and see, so one day we can hope to feel and see, but we have to be uh, very patient. Uh, very patient, very faithful, diligent in all that we do in devotional service. Hare Krishna. So we'll stop here and ask if any questions are there. Donna Kelly. The final statement of the purport was saying, I think that the sincerity itself in, in devotional service is also the mercy of the Lord. Is that right? Yes. 
when he pleases, being satisfied with the sincere attempt of devotional service, depending completely on the mercy of the Lord, then he may be seen out of his own accord. Sincerity is the mercy of the Lord. Everything is the mercy of the Lord. At the same time, God helps those who help themselves. So at least we must make some effort, as it mentions here. Sincerity means the sincere dedication to uh, apply oneself to his prescribed or her prescribed duties. That's the sign of sincerity. If you're sincere, you'll fulfill your duties. That's the sign of sincerity. We cannot, at this stage, offer Krishna love because love is such a pure and high thing. We don't possess it yet. So since we cannot offer Krishna yet love, we can at least offer him our willingness to follow the prescribed duties we have. And that is a sign of our sincerity. Then Krishna will reciprocate gradually. I'll eat the Krishna. The emphasis that we should, the, the, the basic point is that since chanting is considered to be the Yuga Dharma, the highest of the nine principles of devotion, uh, should we place more emphasis on it? Uh, we can say not just chanting, Shravanam Kirtanam. Prabhupada says chanting and hearing. Not just chanting, but chanting and hearing. And uh, he has given us the um, um, formula to follow. The morning program, if it is followed properly, takes place from at least 4.30 till 8.30 in the morning. That is four hours. And you can add to that if, if you're fortunate. You can add another hour or two hours or more, depending upon the individual's ability. But Prabhupada said at least that. Actually, he said morning and evening. So whether we can come together in the evening or whether we arrange some evening program, we should say four hours if possible, you know, and try to add more in the evening if possible. That's optimum. Now, some people may just work and can't go all the way till 8.30 in the morning. Okay, then they should pray to Krishna. Make it possible for me in the future if I can't do it now. If a devotee is humble and realizes, not that he justifies or she justifies, well, this is just as good, because actually there's speciality to the hearing and chanting. I mean, it is the Yuga Dharma, after all. Otherwise, why should someone take sannyas? Because there is some advantage to full-time devotional service, direct devotional. There's not, ev not everything is direct devotional service. Gona Bhakti means those activities which support devotional service. For example, maintaining a family is conducive to devotional service if the family is Krishna conscious. It's called Gona Bhakti. It's not one of the ninefold processes of devotional service. It's not direct. It's indirect devotional service. It's supportive of it. So it's not bad. But neither is it direct devotional service. But it's, it's helpful. So if one, however, finds that once so much time is absorbed in Gona Bhakti and not directly in Sutta Bhakti, then he can at least pray, or she can pray. Gradually free me, and let me engage more and more in direct devotional activities. Give me a taste. You know, even, you may have a time, but you may not have a taste. Time alone is not the only issue. That's what, there's a lot of people with a lot of time. I mean, we saw a man as I was going out for the walk that morning. Remember there was some old guy crossing the street, like a bum, you know, bum type? Look like that person didn't have anything to do. But if you had said, hey, sit down and chant Hare Krishna. All right. Okay. What? So time itself is not the only factor. There has to be some attraction. And that requires purification. 
We have to be humble. The, the biggest problem is lack of humility. The greatest problem is lack of willingness to admit our own foibles. Or, in the name of admitting our own foibles, our own weaknesses, there's also a possibility of pride. That can also be where you admit so much your own weaknesses, but actually it's, it's simply a way of justification. Sincerely, we should hope for more and more opportunity to glorify Krishna. You say one of the most potent processes is to take association with the friends and devotees. I said to take, you said that, and the scripture says that. I said to, oh yes, that's true. Well, one of the most, five most. But I also made the point that all association of those under disciplinary vow is very desirable. I, I wanted to extend the point. Go ahead. Um, Sometimes the process of associating with devotees, if we don't behave properly, it might even damage our bhakti. So how do we know which is so, uh, we are ready to take association with people? Yeah, that's a good point. Sometimes people are too proud or too doubtful or too offensive and therefore it may be better for them not to associate closely. That's possible. That's not, that doesn't mean they, they won't make advancement in that condition, but at least they won't go backwards. And if they associate closely and start revealing so many doubts and they have other problems, then they harm themselves and they harm others and they go down. Sometimes it's better to be separated. So, uh, how do we judge for ourselves? Is it good for us? Or is what good for you? Is, is, are we ready, to, ready for ourselves? Yeah, therefore, you need the help of Guru and Sadhu. You need the help of the spiritual master and, and advanced devotees to judge. Because sometimes you can judge yourself to some extent, and if you want, you can get your judgment confirmed by guru and sadhus. I have too many doubts, or I have this or that. That may be one reason. Or I am ready. So guru and sadhus can confirm. Don't take the matter only in your own hands, because you can be confused about your own position very easily. Dvijamani. Okay. So, is it that even for a very like, unadvanced devotee, they're fully present but we're not recognized? Yes, Krishna and Panchatattva are always present, but we don't always see them. That's true. They are always present, see them or not. So it's not a question of our own. Um, they are always present. Krishna is all pervasive. He is everywhere. Kartika. This issue of associating with Vajra Navas, uh, our tendency to be uh, really kind of poor finding seems to be a big obstacle. I was reading in this book where Lord Chaitanya will not give his own mother such a uh, prema because she had made a really subtle comment about uh, Adoy Kachari. So, you know, <coughs> By how much ability you have to be disciplined in your spiritual life. If you're actually disciplined in your spiritual life, it indicates that you're receiving some mercy. And the lack of discipline, is, you see, sadhana bhakti means basic discipline in, in practicing. So if you don't have the capacity to have that discipline, it means that probably there are offenses being committed. At the stage that we're on, we're in the stage of sadhana bhakti. On the platform of sadhana bhakti, the rigidity in which one executes the practices of sadhana are an indication of the favor of Krishna. And if one does not have the strength or if there are so many obstacles in the path, then it means that there's a good chance that there are offenses, that either there's too much pride or there are offenses, or overly critical nature. And therefore, one doesn't have the purity of heart, the clarity of vision, 
the determination to be strict in one's practice. That's one cause. Another cause is over-attraction to maya. There are many causes, but, but offenses are one of the major causes, since you asked about it. I'm making a clear comment that we're at the stage of sadhana bhakti, which means regulated practices. If one cannot practice regularly, one of the causes is likely Vaishnava Parat. And therefore, if, uh, you can't trace that cause. That's my point. It's not so easy to trace. You overeat, you get a stomach ache. It's easy to see the connection. But it's not so easy to see the connection between going home and making a comment and the fact that somehow or other I don't find that I have enough t time to do the practices I want to do. It doesn't seem to be a connection. There is. That's the nature of Vaishnava Aparat. Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely a connection. Yes? Not so strictly following even more so than someone who is strictly following. Yes, it's possible. It, it is possible. It's not likely, but it's possible. It's not likely, though. The likeliness is that someone who is strictly following the process will soften their heart. Otherwise, there's no use in following the process. However, if there's genuine humility on the part of someone who for some reason cannot follow the process, then gradually Krishna will uh, not, Krishna will make it possible for them to follow the process. But following the process is essential. Sooner or later, one has to come to that point. That cannot be overcome. So the humility is praying to Krishna, give me the opportunity to follow. But I have seen cases like that. One can become proud about following the process. Then again, one can be uh, jealous of someone who is strictly following, and one may not be following, and one may justify it, you know, saying, well, that person's just proud, and actually I'm sincere, but, but, but. These are in, there are many, many possibilities. This is not a stereotype process, process of bhakti. Your guru could always tell you case by case. The doctor knows case by case. But the doctor doesn't want to kill the patients. So he doesn't always tell what he knows. Or well, the patient could get very despondent. Yeah, that's true. If Prabhupada told every one of his disciples what their real qualification was, huh? what would they feel? What would they feel? Maybe the doctor tells those who are strongest. Anyway, let us stop. Otherwise, too many people will get agitated. It's so much easier to hear simply about Krishna's 64 qualities than sometimes to hear about the process of sadhana bhakti. Because when you talk about the process of sadhana bhakti, then you start examining your own condition and it makes it very uncomfortable. So enough operating for today. <laughs> Now some time should be given for the healing process to work. Jai. Srila Prabhupada ki, Sri Sri Gornitai ki, Sri Sri Radha Kalachanji ki, Sri Sri Radha Govinda ji ki, Sri Jagannath Baladev Subhadra Devi ki, Gaur Bhakta Vrinda ki, Gaur Premanandi Hari Hari Bo. Gaur Bhakta Vrinda ki, Gaur Premanandi Hari Hari Bo.